Hi, so Thomas Cook has gone into administration, which is a sad day for its many staff who've been under a lot of pressure and of course for customers and we are inundated with questions. So I want to answer some of the main ones for you now, but before I start, I need to explain something. Currently, the situation is a bit like a wobbly jelly. We've got some basis and some solidity, but a lot is still fluid and there are moving parts. Things can change. Many big companies like banks and credit card providers haven't yet had their meetings about what they're going to do about it. So there's some still up in the air. And there are even questions we can't find answers to yet. Should you cancel your direct debit if you're paying that way? What happens to ancillaries on a wedding package if you book that through the Atoll Protection Scheme? Now, all of those, the team are on it. We have a full guide on Money Saving Expert where we're looking at your questions, doing detailed research and building together a bigger and bigger Q&A. My plan in this quick video is to do the mainstay stuff. I'm not going to go into that level of detail. For that, you'll need to go to the guide. So let's start. If you're abroad watching this or you know someone who's abroad and you're a Thomas Cook customer, you will get a flight home. The Civil Aviation Authority has launched the biggest repatriation event since World War II to bring people back. And you'll also stay until the rest of your holiday. Don't try and come home more quickly. There aren't enough planes to do that. So you need to go via the Thomas Cook website. It will send you to a special Civil Aviation Authority website. You'll go to your destination. You'll click on that and it'll tell you details about your flight home. As I'm filming this, they've only got today's flights, Monday's flights listed, and the rest will be updated. But don't panic. If you're on holiday, enjoy the rest of your holiday. There may be a few occasions where you won't get a flight home and they'll ask you to buy one and refund you. Interestingly, the flights include, as far as we're aware, people who just booked flight only that doesn't normally have the atoll protection. Still, you're going to be brought home anyway. As for your hotel, if you paid for it as part of a package and you're away, then that hotel should be paid for. If you have problems with the hoteliers, there's a special civil aviation authority telephone number that you can call up and they say sort it out and don't pay. My guidance to you would be subtly different. If the hotelier wants money from you, and we've heard cases of this happening because they're worried they won't get paid, call the Civil, Avi Civil Aviation Authority's helpline and ask them for what you should do. But if you feel unsafe and someone is pushing you to give them the money, well, you might pay them, but take receipts and proof if you do to claim the money back later. Don't put yourself in any safety issues. I don't want to scare anyone. I think that's very unlikely to happen in most cases but just always play for your own safety when you're abroad and if you feel th threatened anyway. So, moving on from that, let's go to people who've booked holidays and aren't going yet. Well, if you've booked a holiday uh, and it's a package, generally you will have atoll protection. There are some ifs and buts, but generally you'll have atoll protection or in some circumstances, APTA, and there are some other slight schemes that may apply. That means that you will get a full refund for your holiday. If it was a wedding package and that was part of the holiday and it was booked with the flight, that's covered by Atoll generally, although there are questions over the ancillaries. If you book flight only, then it's slightly more difficult because you tend not to have Atoll protection in most circumstances. Remember my wobbly jelly? You've got to take this with a little bit of a pinch of salt. It's generally right, but there's a lot of different circs out there. So. If you booked flight only, the first thing you'd look at is your travel insurance, which is unlikely to protect you because for it to protect you, you would need travel firm collapse cover. And that is rare in most policies. If you'll have it, it's worth checking, worth calling, but it's unlikely to protect you. The next thing you'll be looking at is credit or debit card protection. If you paid on a credit card and it cost over a hundred pounds, then there's a legal protection called Section 75, and that means the card company is jointly liable with the retailer. So if you can't go to the retailer, or even you don't have to go to the retailer, you go to the card company and say, Oi, I haven't got what I paid for. You're legally responsible, I want my money back. The one problem with that in this case is if you go through an intermediary, be it an agent, or in some cases if you paid via credit card through PayPal, that breaks the causal link that you need to make Section 75 work. I don't know if that's going to happen here, but I just need to warn some people that may happen. If it does happen, plus for anyone who paid on a credit card under £100, plus for anyone who paid on a debit card, then you would look to use what is called chargeback. Now, chargeback is a rule of Visa, MasterCard and Amex. It's not the law, but it's a powerful rule that the, anyone who is processing credit, 
payments needs to sign up to. And what it means is if you don't get your goods, you can ask for your money back. So with chargeback, you would go to your bank, the card provider, and say, can you do a chargeback on Thomas Cook's bank so I get my money back? Now in this case, then, because there's no joint liability, it's a process if you don't get what you paid for. What's likely to happen at the moment is the banks and the card companies are going to say, no, you may be Atoll protected, get your money back from Atoll. So this is only going to work if you're not Atoll protected, and it's probably going to take a couple of days to run through before the banks work out exactly what's happening, who is, i.e. flight only, who is, i.e. flight and package are protected, flight only Germany isn't protected, flight only you should be getting your money back through the card company. If you pay by cash, check, bank transfer, and you haven't got the travel protection and you haven't got the travel insurance, I think it's unlikely you will get your money back. You may become a creditor for, to the company. What that means is the administrators are now in charge. Their job is to get as much money as possible from Thomas Cook's assets. They'll try and sell some off. They might keep some going as a going concern. And of that money, it'll then be distributed to all the people that Thomas Cook owes money, but that's a lot of people. And if anything, it'd be a few pence in the pound. This is why I always say, don't pay in cash, pay on plastic, preferably a credit card paid off in full at the end of every month. Uh, the direct debit one is just an issue that's up in the air for us at the moment, and we are desperately trying to get you answers. I hope we'll have answers by later in the day today on Monday. Vouchers, if you've got vouchers for Thomas Cook, well, again, we always will never to use vouchers. They're never that safe. Vouchers for Thomas Cook are probably not worth much now. There may be a case if a company takes over one branch of Thomas Cook and offers to make the vouchers valid and that they can be used afterwards, but they've no legal need to do so. Those vouchers are probably worthless. But keep them in a drawer because you may be, a, again, a creditor. Something may happen, but I'm afraid it's gone. Yesterday, I was on Twitter advising people, just book with the vouchers. Book something, get at all protection for it. At least then you might get some cover. But if you're watching this now and you missed that yesterday, I'm afraid it's a little bit too late. If you have a Thomas Cook um, prepaid card, your money is safe. Um, the underlying finance provider is a company called WiseCard. You can continue to use that. That is protecting your money on there. That one works. I think that covers most of the big picture questions that are coming out there, but I'm very aware there's a lot of detail. I'm also very aware that the 9,000 UK staff members of Thomas Cook have had a horrible time. They were not told what was going on properly themselves and are probably distressed now. If I could suggest, if you are a staff member of Thomas Cook, then you'll want to hear from the administrator what your situation is. Some people might need to carry on working just to give it process, but many people will be made redundant. If the company doesn't have money, you may be able to claim through the National Insurance Fund. I wish everybody watching this the best possible outcome. For most customers, you are likely to get your money back. But as always in these things, while the official ease will say that you will get your money back, unfortunately, some people will fall through the cracks. And there can be other costs like recouping, you paid for a visa to get to a country you're not now going to. It's unlikely you're going to be able to get your money back. In that case, you're just going to have to shrug your shoulders and say stuff happens or whatever you want to say happens.